Okay, so for the purpose of this demonstration, I hope you guys can hear me well. I do have my mask on, so but I have a mic next to me, so I'm hoping that that will help. All right, and can you guys see the screen? You can do see what I'm doing in class. Yeah. Okay. I wish I could turn both lights on, but if off, but if I do, actually, let me see. If I turn this on and turn that light off, then you guys can't see what you're, you're doing. So that's kind of an issue. Hopefully, this is good enough. Actually, this light is not so great. It kind of washes things out. All right. So at the moment, this is what I have. This is what I, and this is where I ended up last time we talked. So everything's glued down. I left more negative space this time because I really um, wanted some room to paint. And I also wanted to be able to have a little bit more of a narrative. Remember, we, I was talking about how this kind of looked like a whale with the tail. This is the lobster tail, but it kind of looks like a whale because of this round head. And that this lot, this is also a lot, this is a claw. And this is a lobster tail, and it kind of looked like the spout like the water coming out of the whale. Now, you don't have to develop a narrative. That's not necessary. I just did because I, that's what I saw. And then I created some negative space shapes between these shapes, which is kind of fun. So now you can really decide. You don't have to choose a color scheme if you don't want to. You can decide what you paint in the background. But I recommend that it either blends with what you have or it's contrasty. It's much different than what you have. So I'm going to choose to do something much different, which means I'm going to paint differently than I did the first time. So I'm not going to do like an ombre thing. And then maybe I'll do something kind of patterny. So I only have warm color palette here, which is my red and my yellow, my white and my black. And I think what I'm going to do is start with a very very light color like maybe I mix a real light tint of yellow and I'm gonna just kind of go through and sort of fill in my my negative space I don't want you to have any paper showing and remember you can paint on top of your collage and I encourage you to do that because then all of a sudden you you're not seeing the collage as separate from the paper anymore it's kind of merging and turning into one thing. This is kind of a strange yellow, sort of glowy looking. I like it. And I'm just going to sort of fill up the paper with it so that I have kind of a light base. And I'm sort of merging the collage with the rest. Now, if you, I think that, Harmony, you're new, right? You, well, you weren't here for sixth grade? Yeah, I'm new. Yeah, because I've had Xander before and I've had Zach before in Arts Preview. So, you guys remember what it used to be like when I demonstrated? I would just set up in the middle of the room and everyone would be standing around me in a big circle. So, I really wish we could go back to that, but we're not ready to do that yet. So we're going to do it like this for a while, but then eventually we'll go back to me kind of being in front of the room. Yeah. I can change the shape of things too. Like if I don't like that sharp edge, I can paint right over it. Now this is the part that, you know, no one in school is going to teach you how to be an abstract painter, right? I'm just kind of like giving you a set of guidelines, but you're the one that decides where those brush strokes go. I know you can barely see that yellow, maybe if I get really close to it. You might learn a bunch of techniques, you know, how to use your brush in certain ways and how to mix the paint differently and how to apply the paint differently. But ultimately, the way that you paint 
is something that you just need to discover by doing it on your own. I like this color because it's really bright and less contrasty compared to what I already have. What do you guys think? Is that yellow too intense? No? Okay. It almost looks like the white of the paper. It's, it's really light. It's just going to be my base coat. And I might throw a little bit of it here and there, you know, because if this is the background, then there's also background peeking out behind the collage, and I could sort of create the illusion of that. You guys can have to see really close here. And then of course my webcam doesn't zoom it doesn't focus. If you get too close, it's kind of blurry. I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on my demo today because I wanna save some time to give you guys feedback and see what you're working on. I gave you two size brushes for this um, class, so if you're finding that it's taking you too long to get some coverage, with, use your bigger brush. Did you find an image that you liked, Harmony, that was a telephone? Yeah. Are you working from a telephone image? Yeah. Are you just are you just free drawing? I got a phone. You found a phone? No, it's a different I, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. I'm drawing a phone. You're drawing a phone? Yeah, I said did you find a picture of a phone that you liked? Or are you just kind of drawing it from your memory of what a phone looks like. I'm just drawing it as a phone. Okay. That's I fine. Okay. So and I'm seeing here I'm seeing a little bit of background where I could throw in some yellow even though it's my collage. And it'll kind of make the rest feel kind of connected. The neat thing about working this way is that you're really responding to like what you did to it before. So I'm, I'm responding right now to the collage that I put down before in the way that I'm thinking right now. So it's, it's almost like you're having a conversation with yourself. And it depends on the day. I bet you if you did this painting today and then you had the chance to redo the exact same thing the next day, that it would turn out different because you're, you're having a different kind of day. So I'm getting my background almost painted in here. So you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can do it any way you want, but I just thought it would be fun to start off with a base coat of something.
Okay, so now I have this like really glowy yellow. And I'm sorry you guys can't see that at home. I really wish you could see my, my brights better. I might um, try to invest in a better webcam. Okay, so now I just love this red, this like lobster red, and it's partly because uh, it started off with these. These are my objects, right? So I love this red color, and uh, I, I kind of feel like I need to bring it back a little bit. So here we go. I'm not even going to mix any other paint into this red. I want to just add some some more red lines here. What's that? No questions? And that shape of that claw is kind of fun. Maybe I throw that in there few more times. Continue that red somewhere else. Break up the negative space. some outlining. You can look at your artwork from different perspectives. Maybe you turn your paper and you make sure it's balanced from all sides. This is a good way to try to find other things in your artwork, you know, other shapes, other things that might feel like they look like other things, and then you can kind of work off of that. So basically use that red, you guys can look up for a second so you can see it in person. I've used that red to kind of Zach and Harmony and, and Xander. I've used this red to kind of break up the negative space. You know what I mean by that? No. So the negative space is like all the empty spaces, the spaces that don't have anything in them. And sometimes we need to break those up into shapes for visual. visual sort of uh, ease, right? So I've used these red lines to break up that space. Okay, so now that I did that, I'm going to try to pull in a little bit of maybe some oranges, some warm tones here. I'm going to think a little bit quicker now. I was getting a little in my head about this. But I think I want to loosen up a little bit. And just go for it. Experiment with texture. Wiggle your brush in a different way.
All right, and then I can maybe mix a shadow, like maybe in dark maroon might be kind of nice. Um, Miss Greininger? Yeah. Are you using a specific color scheme, or can we use just whatever colors we want? You can use whatever colors you want for this final painting. Whatever feels right. I decided to use a warm color scheme, but you don't have to have one if you don't want to. This one feels a lot more chaotic than the other one I did for first semester. Not really sure why. Hey, what's up, Zach? Yeah, I like the star one. Thank you. Very nice. I can see it. Oh, because I have like different shades at home. You want to add some color? Oh, yeah, I have Sharpie. You have Sharpie? Yeah, I would go for it and add some color. I think I'm getting close to being done here. I'm just putting some high contrast and um, doing a little bit of blending, but I don't want it to be, I'm kind of trying to keep it a little bit more simple than the last one I did. And I'm just drawn to that bold line. I just, I don't know, I, I try, sometimes I try not to do it and then it just happens. It's kind of what I like. Can't resist your aesthetic leanings. What does she mean by that? Well, you, sometimes it's just your style is part of who you are and it just comes out. And that's what you're looking for as an artist that you're really expressing your personal style and you're showing your, yourself through your art. Alright, I think I'm going to drop in some bright highlights and then I'm going to be done. You might want to study it from all sides just to make sure that you're happy with the end result. I think it needs more white. I'm gonna actually go get some more white. How you doing, Xander? Did you get your piece of glue down? You need paint? Are you ready for paint? Not yet? Okay. How are you can I see your first telephone, Harmony? Can you hold it up? Hold it up? Is that the, oh, it's a cell phone. I was thinking when you said telephone, oh, like an old fashioned phone. I don't know why. Because I, maybe you could draw some old fashioned phones in there. You know, the kind that used to ring and you pick it up, hold it up to your ear like that. Yeah. Like a vintage phone. It might be a fun variation. Um, Miss Greninger, can I get some feedback, please? Sure, let me, I'm just going to drop a couple highlights down and then I'll be done with my demo and I can go and jump into the feedback mode. This will take me like 30 seconds.
All right, because I love this. I love this white. These little peeking through of white here and there. So I think I want more of that. It's really thick, bold highlights here and there. Are you using paint or like something else? It's paint. It's acrylic paint. It just looks weird on the webcam. Unfortunately, just doesn't translate. What does it look like I'm using? I thought you had glue. <laughs> oh, it looks thick like glue? No, it's paint. They're lobsters. <laughs> but I cut it, you know, I did a bunch of drawings and then I cut them up. Down in the tail? See, look yeah. at his tail though. Doesn't his tail kind of look like a flower? It kind of does. Yeah. That's where that came from. Alright, almost done. I have started making really silly noises when I do things. I think it's something I do for my son. Like, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> But I have to stop myself from doing it in public when I'm not around him. Okay. I, I am on the fence about this, but I think once I live with it for a couple days, I'm going to like it better. It feels a little wild to me right now. Okay, but I think it's done. All right, so we're, I'm going to take a picture of this and post it so you guys can see it better. Because this webcam situation is no bueno. Okay, I'm going to post it right now. 